Okay, we didn't get to read uh, Mark chapter 6 because the video cut out, so we're going to do an extension here. Uh, Mark chapter 6, Private Without Honor. Jesus left there and went, with, uh, went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who uh, heard him were amazed. And they asked, Where did this man get these things? What, what's this wisdom that he's been given? Isn't this the, the carpenter? He even does miracles. Isn't this Mary's son, and the son of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Um, only and Jesus said to them, only in this home town among relatives and in his own house as a prophet without honor he could not do any miracles there except lay hands on a few people that were sick and heal them and he was amazed at their lack of faith faith is what motivates miracles faith is what brings healing and because there was no faith in his town because his people didn't believe in him he wasn't able to work there it's the same way in the, in the earth there's no faith in the area it's hard for God's miracles to happen <laughs> why do you think that there's less miracles now today than there have ever been because so many people don't have deep faith anymore they're not touching God with their faith God wants to be touched by us through our faith so, uh, Jesus sends out the twelve. Jesus went around teaching from village to village and called the twelve together to him. And he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread no bag, no money in your in your belt. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. I actually did that to a church once because they wouldn't receive me after I was a part of their family. And it was one of the hardest things I did, but I must feel like I had to do that in faith as a testimony against them. Um, here he's telling them, don't take anything extra except a staff. No food. No money. Just wear your your outfit that you got on. Don't bring an extra pair. And then when you enter someone's house, stay there while you're there the whole time. And now they went out and they preached that people should repent. And they drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oils and healed them. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miracle, miraculous powers are at work with him. Others said, he is Elijah, and still others claim he's a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John... The man I be beheaded has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he married. For John had been saying, 
to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodians nursed a grudge against John. Herodias, his wife, nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to. Because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, when Herod heard when Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. So Herod respected John and put him in prison to protect him basically from his own wife attempting to kill him. He didn't understand what John was saying. It left him puzzled, but he liked to listen to what he was saying. He knew there was something there. And finally, an opportunity came on Herod's birthday, and he gave a banquet for the high officials and the military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. So he had all the big wigs, all the big wigs of Galilee in his house. And when the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for anything that you want, and I will give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, Whatever ask I will give you up to half of my kingdom. Now she went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She said, The mom said, The head of John the Baptist, because that's what she wanted. She wanted John the Baptist dead. So at once the girl, not knowing any better, hurried into the king with all of his guests and says, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Now the king was greatly distressed, but because of his oath and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Jesus' apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and were taught and then because so many people were coming and going that they did not have a, even a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and let's get some rest. So they went to themselves to uh, in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed, he saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. This is ministry. When you're tired and you want to rest and you just want to get away. Sometimes people, God will still bring people to you. He'll still bring sheep that lack a shepherd. And... He'll have you teach them, even out of your tiredness or out of your illness, in my case. Um, so he taught them many things. And by this time, it was late in the day. So his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it is already very late. Send the people away so they can go to their surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. <laughs> But Jesus, being Jesus, says, you give them something to eat. And they were astonished, and they look at him and said, well, that that's eight months of a man's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them? How many loaves do you have, Jesus says? Go and see. And... When they found out 
they said we have five loaves and two fish and Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass so they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he gave thanks and he broke the bread then he gave it to his disciples to set it before the people he also decided the two fit to divided the two fish among them they all ate and were satisfied and when the disciples picked up the baskets they picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish the number of men who had eaten was 5,000 so that's only the men 5,000 men ate and then you had women and children in that crowd too so you're probably looking at about 15,000 people um experts say someplace between eight and fifteen thousand with five loaves and two fish because god can make things happen immediately jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd after leaving them, he went up on the mountainside to pray. And when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. At about the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought it was a ghost and they cried out because they saw him and were terrified immediately he spoke to them and said take courage it is I don't be afraid he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down they were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves their hearts were hardened when they had crossed over, they handed, they landed at Geneset, Genesaret, and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran through out the whole region and carried the sick on mats, or where, where to wherever they heard he was, and wherever he went into villages, towns, or countryside. They placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. So now at this point, Jesus' ministry is in full swing. He's out there going and doing his thing. It really talks about how we are as disciples to go out and minister and it also talks about how Jesus ministered and how faith touches Christ and how faith is the catalyst for miracles if we don't believe ourselves then it will never happen um, I personally in my life have some things that I know that my faith lacks in and in other areas of my life I have great faith it's like it's like no brainer I don't understand why I can be so strong in my faith in some parts and so weak in others and I think that's just part of the human condition we have to surrender those areas where we have weakness and let God turn those into our greatest strengths so on that note, I bid you adieu. Enjoy your evening. God bless you.